Hello, and thank you for watching this video in the SQL review series. In one of the previous videos, we covered the aggregate functions such as min, max, average, sum, and count. In this video, we will continue this coverage by introducing the group by clause. The query that is currently showing determines the lowest and the highest currency exchange rate from US dollars to euros over the entire period that the table covers, which runs somewhere from 2005 through 2008. The information may be more useful if we can break down the average or the minimum or the maximum of the average rate by year or possibly even by month. Now there are date functions in SQL Server that will allow you to determine the year or the month from a specific date and I will illustrate this briefly first. We can use the year function on a date field to determine what the year value is. Such as in this example. Similarly, the month function will provide us with the month for each of the dates. Now what I would like to do is I would like to see a list of all of the years that are covered by the table and then for each year show the highest and the lowest exchange rate. This is possible by selecting the year of the currency rate date but I cannot simply execute this function because I'm selecting a field currency rate date which is not contained in an aggregate function or in the group by clause. So this error message may seem confusing at first but it is actually very instructive. What SQL Server is telling me is that I'm not able to select a field in my select statement if it is not included in an aggregate function when there are already other fields in an aggregate function. So of course the average rate function is contained in the aggregate functions min and max. But the currency rate date, or more precisely the year of the currency rate date, is not contained in an aggregate function. Now, I could solve this problem by wrapping it in an aggregate function, but this does not give me the desired result. Instead, what I need to do is I need to start using the group by clause. The group by clause follows the where clause and will allow me to take the data that I do not want aggregated and create groups. So in this case, I do not want to aggregate the data for currency rate date, so I will include that field in the group by clause. And this now gives me the desired result. I see all of the years covered by the currency rate table, and for each year I can then see the lowest and the highest rate of the exchange. The group by function is very important because it allows us to create any number of groups. If I want to take it a step further, I could also group by month and year. So by adding the month function for currency rate date to the group by clause, I can now determine the year and month and for each of those years and months combinations the lowest and the highest rate in that month. You will have already noticed even in the function where we determined the year only that the sort order is not the way we would like for it to be. We can fix that by using the order by clause which always comes last, in this case after the group by, and then determining the columns which we would like to order by. We can use three methods for ordering by. We can repeat the column name if needed including the function. We could use the alias name in the case of the order by and order by is one of the few uh, clauses that will allow us to use alias names or we can use the 
ordinal number of the column. So to keep it very simple, I will use the ordinal number of the columns, 1 and 2, meaning that I will first sort by the first column and then by the second column, which gives me the years 2005, 2006, and when we scroll down, 2007, 2008, and then of course within each year we have sorted by month. This is an initial exploration of the group by clause. The group by clause can take grouping and aggregating to the next level by then also applying filters to the grouped and aggregated data. This is done using the having clause, which will allow us to create conditions similar to what you might find in the where clause, but in this case on the results of the grouping and the aggregation. So I might want to find months whereby the minimum rate was less than 1 and the maximum rate was greater than 1. This will give me the months in which the exchange rate indicated that at some point during the month the euro was more valuable after which the dollar became more valuable and this happened for a total of four times in a three-year period covered by this table. This video has demonstrated the use of the group by clause in combination with the aggregate functions as well as the having clause which then filters the results of the grouping and the aggregation. It is important to clearly distinguish between the WHERE clause and the HAVING clause. As their order in the SQL statements illustrates, the WHERE clause will take precedence over the group BY. The WHERE clause will exclude rows from being grouped and aggregated. Then the group BY clause will operate and create the required number of groups in our result set after which the aggregations will take place. And then finally the having clause will operate and will exclude any groups that do not meet the requirements or the conditions in the having clause. Thank you for watching this video in the SQL review series.